You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. A new year means it's time for a new home network that can keep up. With Cox Internet, you have the speed and coverage your family needs to stay connected. You'll enjoy Cox's fiber-based hybrid network with options for fast upload and download speeds. And if your household has lots of connected devices, panoramic Wi-Fi may be the perfect fit thanks to its additional control features. Plus, with advanced security on panoramic Wi-Fi, you'll know each connected device is securely protected 24-7. A whole world of connectivity is yours with Cox Internet. Learn more at Cox.com. must be Sunday night. I must be Alan Ray. Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Night with Alan Ray. I am your humble host. If you find yourself traversing about the internet, get in that chat room at www.klrnradio.com. It's kind of a light chat room tonight. Oh, we got myself. We got Mike. We got Mike in there. We got Ordy. We got Raptor. I'm not going to genocide your Raptor, I promise. Uh, we got Evo in there, I think. He's somewhere lurking about. Hey, it's going to be a fun show. We're going to have a good time. 
uh, show notes. Who's got show notes? As we speak right now, um, the D.C. area, the North Co- uh, the West Coast, East Coast. Yeah, East Coast, that way. <laughs> East Coast is uh, getting ready for some pretty nasty weather. Um, goodness gracious, especially after last night, tornadoes moved through Tennessee, killed, what, like 15, 16 people, injured a bunch of people. It was crazy. Uh, but, you know, it's not unusual. No, it's not global warming. It's not climate catastrophe. It's not because Alex Jones was put back on Twitter because that's the globalist elite plan that, you know, when they put Alex Jones back on Twitter, they did all this stuff so that uh, so that you'll know that Alex Jones, uh, they're coming after him. They're coming after him. Anyways, it's not Alex Jones. Um, it's just sometimes in December things happen. There have been horrible, horrible uh tornadoes and and things like you know inclement weather because it transitions yesterday it was 60 degrees in the cornfields well the barren fields of southeastern michigan i was out in just a sweatshirt kicking around the backyard doing things felt good it was kind of breezy There was a few things i wanted to do but i couldn't because the breeze was kicked up quite high but i went on about my (laughs) oh rex is in chat now too um I went out about my business yesterday and had a good time and, and just enjoyed the warmth because I knew t- by today when I woke up it would be cold again, and it was. And that kind of extreme transition between heat and cold, anytime you see that, you have issues. You have weather issues. And so if you're on the East Coast, if you're in that area, be careful, man, because they're going to get like one and a half to three inches of rain. They got flood warnings out. Could be some thunderstorms. Could be some freezing rain, snow. It could be anything. I mean, really, I, you, you can you can have everything and anything being thrown at you in that kind of uh, that kind of weather. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness. Earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Anyways, <laughs> um, welcome to the show. Got a lot to talk about. There's a little bit of weather, not too much. We got hit, we got nailed. The earth got nailed by a solar storm this week. Uh, It hit the other side of the earth, knocked out communications for a while. I watched the bands go flat at midnight uh, the other night. Just nothing, absolutely nothing on the bands. Uh, And and it's the solar weather. We're getting the sun's acting up, our weather's acting up. They try to tell you the two aren't related. I think they are. But what the heck? Let's get going on this. We'll do some prepper talk. We'll do some politics talk. We'll do all kinds of talk. Don't go anywhere. (laughs) Let's kick it off. I was telling you last week that um, that COP28 uh, summit going on in Dubai was going to be pretty interesting. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so the Saudi Arabian government is, is doubling down on what they said last week. They're not going to be put out of business. Saudi Arabia, the world's leading exporter of oil, has become the biggest obstacle to an agreement at the United Nations Climate Summit in Dubai, the climate worshippers, 
where countries are debating whether to call for a phase out of fossil fuels in order to fight global warming, negotiators and other officials said. A Saudi delegation has flatly opposed any language in a deal that would even mention fossil fuels. The oil, gas, and coal that when burned create emissions that are so dangerously heating the planet. They're not really heating the planet. We know better than that. We know. Um Saudi negotiators have also objected to a provision endorsed by at least 118 countries aimed at tripling global renewable energy capacity by 2030. Saudi diplomats have been particularly skillful at blocking discussions and slowing the talks, according to the interviews with a dozen people who have been inside closed-door negotiations. Okay, I know Saudi Arabia has, you know, a different agenda. Let's face it, if it wasn't for gas and oil, They'd still be living in tents out in the middle of the sand. There is nothing else there. There's nothing else. They might have, what, olives? Okay, that's cool. Um, But they're the only ones making sense. They're telling people out there, telling people, look, you you cut oil, you cut fuel, you cut fossil fuels, which we know they're probably not have. There's a lot of study out there that says that they really don't know where, quote, fossil fuels, unquote, come from. But there's a lot of studies out there saying they're not, they have nothing to do with fossils at all. That, that needs to be uh, pretty much done away with. Of course, they're not going to do that. Ooh, we're going to ruin out. Um, yeah, maybe in about 10,000 years. Maybe not. But the Saudi Arabian government, their delegation to this, this climate cult worship service that's going on right now, um, they came out and said, they look, you, you, you cut fossil fuels, you cut oil and natural gas, you kill millions of people, millions and millions and millions of people. You bankrupt countries, nations that are already third world. You go ahead and finish them off. Um, and of course, they're, they're, you know, the left, the, the extremist lefts, the cult worship, the climate worshipers are dead set on doing just that. If you look at the big picture, And I I don't want to go Alex Jones on you here. I could. I could go Alex Jones. You know I could do that, but I'm not going to. Um, You look at the big picture. Every single item on the leftist agenda, the extreme leftist agenda, promotes reduction of civilization, death, sterilization. The most dangerous... The most dangerous thing in the world is to be a baby inside a mother's womb in 2023. Isn't that scary? Isn't that sad? Of course, they don't see you as a baby. They see you as a, oh, you're a clump of cells. So we got Jeff in there. Jeff missed you tonight, buddy. Jeff's in the chat. Got to love it. Um, But everything they do. You you look at the big picture of, of this transgender movement, this transgender. Oh, Your kid played with a Barbie doll. Rush him into the ER. Let's cut his genitals off. You know, your your little girl climbed a tree. Oh no, she's she's gender confused. Let's go cut her boobs off. Let's let's sew a phallic on her and just make her this freak. Yeah, that'll do wonders for her self esteem. Having big scars all over her body and something hanging that doesn't work, where she has to take medicines the rest of her short life. They don't want to tell you any of that stuff. But well, the big picture is, is that sterilizes our youth. They're pushing as many kids into that as they can because they know. They know darn well it sterilizes, it neutralizes that child. That child will not reproduce. That's a victory for the extremist cult worshipers, uh, climate cult worshipers. That's what that is. It's a victory. And so when the Saudi delegation to this COP28 comes out and says, you know, no, No, we're not going to allow you, A, to bankrupt us, and B, do something stupid like kill two-thirds of the planet's population because they're going to freeze to death. We're not going to let you do that. These people freak out. They go crazy. They don't want to hear that. That's against the the, the regulations. That's against the narrative. Well, we're going to talk about narrative tonight. We're going to talk about narrative. We're going to talk about harsh realities tonight. That's what I do here. And I joke, I laugh, I cut up about it. But in all reality, you need to know what we're talking about here. You need to know it. So we got Saudi Arabia. 
and we talked, we spoke a little bit about this last week that they were going to, uh, they're going to kick back. They're going to be mules. They were just going to sit there and they like, like stubborn mules and they weren't going to go anywhere on this fossil fuel thing. And you got all the rest, you know, what, 118 other countries. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah, they can. They have every right to. They have every right to. That's called self-preservation for them. And it's not just self-preservation for them. They're actually the only ones that are rationalizing what kind of damage it's going to do, like, oh, to, I don't know, you and me. And we're living in a world right now that, I don't know, Yes, I'm going to rant, rave, I'll yell about it, but I've just lost the energy to try to wake people up. I don't try to wake people up anymore. You know what? Just stay asleep. Stay asleep. Keep your eyes closed. I and mine, my family, I'm going to make sure that when the left has their way and things collapse, and and here's the problem. Let me back up a step. The, The leaders of the left truly believe in their heart that when they intentionally collapse society, which they want to do, don't tell me they don't want to do it. They say it all the time. You can tell it by their actions. You can tell it by the movies they produce. You can tell it by the things they say. You can tell it by the actions that they're taking right now. They want to collapse modern society and get us all living basically in tents, grass huts, igloos, you know, eating grubs, eating bugs, no meat, no fun, can't keep our houses warm, you know, cut it down to what the population was 500 years ago. That's what their goal is. They tell you that if you listen to them. Jane Goodall was just out saying that that we got to cut the population down to what it was 500 years ago or the planet's going to be destroyed. It's a lie. It's a lie. It'll be more easily controlled, but it won't be destroyed if the population keeps going. You got them out there saying all this stuff. And they believe in their hearts. They believe in their hearts. The people who say all this stuff believe in their hearts that when it happens, they will be on the controlling side of things. They will be calling the shots. You go to any average, loudmouth, ignorant professor, and we'll get into some ignorant professors tonight, who sit there and say, well, we have to reduce the population, reduce the population. Um and you ask, oh, well, we, well, we got to have people live in crates. We got to have people eat bugs. We got we to gotta live in, in 15-minute cities. And when you start talking to them and, and get to questioning them, they don't believe that that will be for them. That will be for you. And what they don't realize is, is, is they're history ignorant. These are, these are very stupid people. Yeah, they might have doctorate's degree in their one wheelhouse, but you get them outside of that wheelhouse, they're ignorant. You start talking history to them. What do you think happens when people aren't eating, when people can't find enough food, what do you think happens? What do you think happens when I live here and my children two and a half hours away need my assistance, but I live in a 15 minute city and it's illegal for me to travel outside of that city. Do you think I give a rat's butt what the law says? No, I'm going to my children. I'm going to help them. The people I love, the people I care about, your 15-minute cities, can you can go pound sand with them. Well, these people believe that they will be calling the shots, and they will be able to do anything they want, go anywhere they want, because they're the leaders in this. And they don't understand that when they finally get their way, when everything collapses, when chaos breaks out, when people don't have enough to eat, they can't stay warm. They're miserable, and they've just had enough. You know whose heads go rolling down Capitol steps? It's not the, sm- the little people. And they keep saying, well, you're not going to call a war on your government. We got bombs, and we got tanks. These history illiterate morons have no idea what happens when societies collapse. They don't study history. They don't study resistance movements and how evil and and what somebody who is defending their own lives, the lives of the people they love, and it comes between desperation. They are on their last leg. They can't, they, they, they have no other option but to fight. And if they die, that's great for them because at least the suffering stops. But they want to, they want to break through the tyranny. They have no idea 
how ruthless these people can be, the extent of what they will do. How treacherous they can become. And the people who are right now promoting all of this crap will be the targets. Now, I'm not promoting any violence. I hope people wake up, vote these people, yeet these people out into the ocean or to some third world little island where they can sit around and be dictators to each other all the time, take turns playing dictator. Exactly. Already chuckles in Taliban. All you got to do is study the modern, the best modern example is the Taliban. You go over to Afghanistan. These people kicked Russia's butt for what, 13 years? They kicked our butts over there. The second we left, they just took right back over again. Like nothing ever happened. They have patience. And they're ruthless. And if the American people have to defend their homelands, and I'm not talking about these mealy-mouthed, Starbucks-swilling pansies that live in the cities. I'm talking about the people who have grown up getting their butts kicked for no reason at all, been vilified by the left just for being born who they were. When they end up having to defend that last bit of ground. You're not going to believe what they're capable of. Human beings can be the most ruthless, crazed, demonic, barbaric animals on this planet when it comes to defending that last bit of sanity, of ground, of freedom that they have. History shows it time after time after time after time. And the people running this country right now, they have access to that kind of history. They just don't think it's going to happen to them because they got the better way. They got the final answer this time. This time it's going to be different. Well, it's not. It's not. It's going to be the same. And these are very stupid people. They always have been. Where do I want to go with this today? What do I want to do? Yeah, let's 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 kind of circle around the bowl a little bit before we we're gonna you know we're close enough we're ten minutes from the break. We come back we're gonna talk about stupid professors. Let's talk about the meltdown that's going on, on Twitter right now because Alex Jones is back on Twitter. Yeah, I'm back and I'm mad. Um. <laughs> Yesterday, Elon Musk threw a poll out there and said, should I restore Alex Jones's Twitter account? Overwhelming, overwhelming majority said, yes, you should. Now, let me, I, I'll tell you, I make fun of Alex Jones, okay? You hear me do the impression. I can do that impression because basically I've been kind of listening to him since, oh my gosh. Well, we'll put it this way. He, um... He was on shortwave radio um, with, it was it was the Power Hour, Joyce Riley and whoever the guy was, the Power Hour, and then Alex Jones. And so I've listened to him, and he's funny. I, he, he does and says some things. And, and Tucker Carlson interviewed him this week, and I started looking and listening to it. I listened to the whole thing. And I started thinking, you know, if Alex Jones went on the air like he was speaking to Tucker Carlson, Yeah, the left would still think he's a conspiracy theorist, but the right wouldn't think he's nearly as nuts as they think he does. Um, (laughs) Jeff, you're going to get Alex Jones impersonations all night. My voice is probably shot already from it. It's been bad all week. Um, But I can take him or leave him. The problem is is, is he keeps being correct. Uh, He is, as Tucker Carlson pointed out in the interview, he has made some predictions that are eerily, scarily true. And as he pointed out himself, because it's not that I'm some kind of a prophet. I read their articles. I read their books. And I tell you what their books say. And sure as heck, that's what happens. If he would only scale down the insanity part, the some of the stuff he says, you know, just like you can't, you can't go for the shock value um, and have people think you're sane. It's just the way it is. Now, 
Am I glad he's back on Twitter? Yeah. If you remember right, when he was banned from Twitter, they banned him from everything. They banned his PayPal accounts. They banned how he could run his business. They stood up and basically tried to eliminate him from everything. And those of us that understood, intimately understood what was taking place, the tyranny behind what was going on said, oh, no, you can't do this. I don't care if it is Alex Jones. You cannot do this. This is the most un-American thing you've ever done. Why would you want to ban Alex Jones? You you know, and, and I, I came on this show, I came on the Hardcore Patriots when I was running at the time, and I said, look, it's best that you have Alex Jones out there saying what he's saying. That way you understand what he's thinking. You can keep track of him. Because he's still going to have a show. He's still going to collect an audience. And the more taboo you try to make him, the more popular he becomes. So if, if you want to shut him up, trying to make him taboo is the worst thing you can do. That's the funniest part about these experts, these so-called educated experts, who are trying to ban free speech, who want free speech squelched, who want to control speech. Newsflash, you don't control speech. You never have. No government on the planet has ever been able to really control speech. Because when you make it taboo, when you make it illegal in public, it goes underground to dark lit bars and taverns, to hotels, to secret meeting places, to living rooms where people are talking to each other and they take Alexa and put it, you know, 300 yards away out in somebody's barn and unplug it where it can't hear you. And they get rid of cell phones so they can't be monitored. And then they speak their minds. And you paranoid morons in the government and in these institutions who think you're going to make that go away, you're stupid. You're, you're absolute morons. You're idiots. It doesn't go away. In fact, it becomes more of a delicacy. Oh, getting together with my homies out back by the fire pit. We left all the technology up in the house. It's just me and my bros sitting around the fire discussing what happens when the proverbial shizzle hits the fans, how we're going to handle things. And you aren't privy to what we talk about. Doesn't that, NSA, I know you probably listen to this show. You've got to. I know I know my numbers coming out of the Maryland area. I know my numbers coming out of the D.C. area. I know you're listening. Doesn't that just piss you off, knowing that people still do that? Knowing that we understand that technology listens, and so we distance ourselves from it? And we gather around in barns and dark lit bars and taverns and around around campfires and, and secret meetings and we talk about the reality of what's going to happen when all of this fails and we are left on our own to do what we need to do to defend freedom for the next generation. Doesn't that piss you off that we can still do that? You don't have enough drones to fly over every place that's doing it. Human ingenuity, God bless America. We can make ways of just shutting you right out, and we can still say whatever we want behind closed doors. I bet that just grinds your butt, doesn't it, FBI? We've already reached the bottom of the hour. When we come back, we're going to talk things like EV's replacement. What? Yeah. Something I've been privy to since, oh gosh, the 90s. Um, seven phrases that if you use every day, it shows that you may have a low emotional intelligence and where it came from and why it's so funny. Bernie Sanders. Why, why am I agreeing with Bernie Sanders? And everything else, don't go away. We'll be back in just a moment on Sunday Night with Alan Ray.
a Blue Cross Medicare member, managing your medications from home is simple. With our easy-to-use prescription drug plans, you can get the medicine your doctor prescribes from your local pharmacy or even delivered by mail. For the trusted care you need and want, Blue Cross will be here with more convenient ways of getting it. Like we've been for more than 80 years. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Confidence comes with every card. To learn more, visit bcbsm.com slash senior options. Hey, Randy, what you doing? Oh, hey, Dave. I'm just making a list of things that make me feel really, really good. Wearing Bombas socks. Trust me, that's number one on my list. Bombas socks feel so good because we use the smartest design and best materials, making them the most comfortable socks ever. Plus, because socks are the number one most requested clothing item in homeless shelters, we donate a pair for every pair purchased, and that feels pretty good, too. To shop Bombas or learn more about how your purchase supports those experiencing homelessness, go to bombas.com slash comfy and get 20% off your first purchase. If you prefer real mornings, shouldn't you have a real breakfast? At McDonald's, we get real about breakfast. That's why you can have a savory sausage biscuit with delicious hash browns for only $1.50. It's time to wake up breakfast. Single item at regular price. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Today, this breakfast isn't just breakfast. It might be the first McDonald's breakfast you're having at McDonald's again. This lunch might be a weekly tradition you hadn't had in weeks. And this dinner might be the first one you bought for not just you in a while. Whatever this order is for you, McDonald's will be here to take it. Get more of the chicken you love with a delicious McChicken sandwich for $1. And for an extra buck, add a refreshing Dr. Pepper. Dining rooms are starting to reopen in certain communities. At participating McDonald's, cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restriction supply, federally insured by NCUA. Never been tested. I'd like to think that if I was, I would pass. Look at the tested and think there before the grace go on. Might be a coward, I'm afraid of what I might find out. Never had to knock on wood, but I know someone who has. Which makes me wonder if I could. It makes me wonder if I never had to knock on wood. And I'm glad I have it yet. Because I'm sure it isn't good. That's the impression that I have. Knocking on wood, it is Sunday night with Alan Ray. I'm your humble host, Alan Ray. It's no secret, and if you don't know this, well, maybe you should read a book, study a little bit. The way electric vehicles are manufactured right now, here in 2023, are very unsustainable. Your governments, your federal government, your state government, especially you, if you live in Michifornia, used to be Michigan until Grinch got into her second term and decided she's just going to pull the plug on it and just kill us all. You know that the way electric vehicles, EVs, are made at this moment are highly unsustainable. There is not enough raw material for the batteries, number one. Um, Unless you enjoy the fact that little children are mining the lithium and things like that for the batteries, which I'm sure there's a lot of people, probably a majority of people on the left, who just get all kinds of pleasure out of that, a bunch of pedophiles. Um... You know that the way that vehicles are made right now, electric vehicles, completely unsustainable. You cannot carry on this kind of production for very long. 
I, I, I think they know that. I think the powers that be know that. I think they're fully understanding that. I think they understand that it is just a temporary solution because they don't want you driving anyways. These people have made it very clear that you're going to live in 15-minute cities and walk and bicycle everywhere. And you're not going to need transportation. Well, along comes Ford. And this is going to make a lot of people mad because if this is successful, this has implications. Um, and Raptor, I, I'm not even going to kid you. If I had to buy an EV today, Tesla would be the one I'd buy. I'm not really anti-EV. I mean, I drive them all the time. There's, They're kind of cool. If they get the range on them and if they make them actually, you know, sustainable, they make it where they're actually something that, you know, is comparable to internal combustion engines that gets 500 miles to a charge that I can roll into my driveway on a Friday night, plug it into a couple of solar panels, and when I wake up uh, Monday morning to go back to work, it's a full charge, and I'm, I'm out the door, and it's completely off-grid. We'll talk. I don't have a problem driving them. They're kind of neat. They're quiet. They're kind of cool. The problem is, is they're really, really heavy, especially the big trucks and buses. All of them buses, the, the public transportation that they want for you, not them, you little people, um, all that public transportation they want to go electric, those things are very, very, very heavy. So what you say? Well, so what? The roads will be t- deteriorating in no time under these things. Um, they get stuck easy. There's all kinds of issues with them if they don't get the right or something like that. Um, I know this because I deal with them. But along comes Ford. Ford didn't get the memo that everybody's going electric. Ford decided that they are going to roll out their F-Max. It's ready to go right now. F-Max, and this is from, who did this article? I might have to subscribe to them. Uh, Clean Techno. Quote, hydrogen fuel cell skeptics have been heating up the inner tubes, but the money just keeps flowing into new fuel cell ventures. In the latest sign of respect for the technology, the Turkish company Ford Autosan has embarked on a series of deals aimed at bringing its new F-Max heavy-duty fuel cell truck to the European market. The news news follows hot on the heels that GM's Hydrotech fuel cell division has entered the market for electric cement trucks and other heavy-duty applications, so hold on to your hats. GM's recent activities in the hydrogen fuel cell area have crossed the clean technical radar a number of times, including the company's support for a new green hydrogen technology. The fuel cell journey of the Ford Motor Company has garnered somewhat less attention. A quick series uh, a search its investor website yields little as in no hits under the key phrase fuel cells. Its commercial site autocorrects to search for fuel wells, which isn't particularly helpful. However, that doesn't mean nothing is going on. Earlier this year, Ford let slip that its new e-transit battery-powered electric van, which I'm intimately familiar with, unfortunately, which is assembled in Turkey, will provide the platform for exploring the use of hydrogen fuel cells in delivery fleets under a three-year trial period in the UK. The trial will focus on fleets that have limited access to battery charging infrastructures with the idea that fuel cell vans can replace both diesel fuel and battery power. Test fleet data will provide insights into the total cost of owning and operating a large van with increased range and operating hours to match its diesel-powered equivalent and without the need to charge, Ford explained in a press release dated May 9th. Ford also has its hand in the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle business through Ford Audison, a publicly traded firm in which the Ford Motor Company holds an equal 41% share with Turkish holding company Cock Holding. <laughs> Ford Audison certainly has not been letting the fuel cell grass grow under its feet. The e-transit delivery van project has barely gotten underway, and the company is already scaling up to the heavy-duty fuel cell truck level. On August 3rd, the legacy engineer firm Ballard Power Systems announced that it has partnered with Ford uh, Trucks Division and Ford Audison to supply a fuel cell system for the new F-Max prototype hydrogen fuel cell truck. The partnership includes an uh, initial project order for two of Ballard's FC Move XD 120 kilowatt fuel cell engines. 
If all goes according to plan, the new truck will take its place alongside existing diesel vehicles in Odison's F-Line as a 44-ton long-haul heavy-duty truck. The new truck will also feature an EU's plan for decarbonizing its freight hauling industry. Hydrogen fuel cells are nothing new. They've had hydrogen fuel cell technology. Now, this is just me talking. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the uh, article right now. It's on, um, what was that? Uh, but up, but um, cleantechnica.com. Go there, you can find it. It tells you about the hydrogen fuel cells. Um, I can see hydrogen fuel cells becoming the future. And that should scare the left to death. It should scare them to death because that's not the future they want for us. They want electric vehicles. They want EVs that you have to charge so that they can say, oop, nope, your social credit score is X, so you can't charge your electric vehicle today, which means you have to stay home. Oh, you lost your job? Well, here, go live in this shipping crate, and we'll give you bugs to eat, and we'll give you your food, and you'll be fine. Hydrogen fuel cells allow our freedoms to be retained. They're like the the anti-green energy stuff. Yeah, they're clean. They're carbon-free. But on a better note, mm, when you don't have to charge something, when you're not at the behest of the government, of your local, state, federal government, when they're not on your back, and when they can, you know, and, and let's face it, guys, I get the feeling that the entire push to make everything electric, and I mean everything electric, and then simultaneously um, making our electric grid less and less reliable is completely intentional. What they want with everything, you know, they don't want you to have gas stoves. They don't want you to have gas furnaces. They don't want you to have gas cars. They don't want you to have anything Gas. They want it all electric. And the reason they want it all electric is they can turn it on and off. They can flip the switch. They can tell you, oh, look, we tied your electricity into your credit score. Your credit score is not very good anymore. So you don't get electricity or you get half the electricity or we can ration your electricity. That's where this is all going. A hydrogen fuel cell is autonomous. It, it allows you to just go and go and go and go. And they don't want that. So I assume hydrogen fuel cells are going to have a long up, uphill battery uh, battle along the way. Oh, what else we got? Oh, here's weird news. I actually agree with Bernie Sanders. How many times? It's really weird. You got this uh, lurch, John Fetterman out there, saying things that people agree with. Now you have Bernie Sanders. And, of course, you know, he's a moron. He's a leech. He's a socialist leech. He's leached off the American public. He's never held a real job. But he was on, uh, let's see, the Times of Israel has this. He was on Face the Nation. So Senator Bernie Sanders, a harsh critic of Israel, repeats his assertion that there is no possibility of having a permanent ceasefire with a group like Hamas. I agree. Why am I agreeing with Bernie Sanders? Oh, my gosh. The tried is the Arbark Duck. They're the dirty Hamas. We got to dent them. I think we ought to go over there, suck them out of the tunnels. Um. Anyways, he says, I don't know how you can have a permanent ceasefire with Hamas, who has said before October 7th and after October 7th that they want to destroy Israel and they want a permanent war. He said with an interview on Face the Nation. So said, I don't know how you have permanent ceasefire with an attitude like that. I think Israel has the right to defend itself and go after Hamas, not the Palestinian people. We'll take that. Yeah, it's so weird. Truth comes from the weirdest places these days. What do you do? And then, of course, you know, you forgot about this one little guy, the little guy out there over in Ukraine. You, you, have you forgot about him? Zelensky still doesn't want you. He's still throwing a fit, okay? According to Political, 
Biden is to host Zelensky at the White House amid talk, uh, stalled negotiations over Ukraine aid. Zelensky's coming over here to, to, to you know, sit next to the uh, the uh, Capitol building with a pan and say, oh, give me money, give me money. He's a professional beggar now. He's going to beg. So President Joe Biden walks with Ukraine. President blah, 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 blah. He's going to host um, uh, Zelensky at, of Ukraine at the White House on Tuesday as negotiations on an aid deal for the country remain stalled in Congress. Zelensky's visit will underscore the United States' unshakable commitment to supporting the people of Ukraine as they defend themselves against Russia's brutal invasion. White House Press Secretary Dunderhead Jean-Pierre, whatever token Black Dyke said. Um, the meeting will is the latest White House effort to apply pressure on Congress, where a deal that would deliver emergency aid to Ukraine seems to have reached an impasse. Well, the reason it's reached an impasse is because people in Congress want our borders to be secure before we secure Ukraine's borders. Well, the left can't have that. All right. And speaking of the war in Israel, this is kind of an interesting thing. According to CBS News, President Biden's handling of Israel-Hamas war continues to meet with a majority disapproval, as relatively few Americans think his administration actions are bringing things closer to peaceful resolution, and a rising number of Democrats feel he's showing too much support for Israel. Hi, got yourself bent over a barrel there, don't you, Joe? 46% of Democrats say that Biden has no impact for making a peaceful resolution. They don't like what he's doing. 81 million votes. 81 million votes. The guy is a human turd. If he if he runs again and he ends up getting the primaries, doesn't get primaried out of the presidency, it's going to be interesting to see if he gets 81 million votes again this time. Eighty-one million votes, but yet if you question it, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're an election denier. You can call me whatever you want. If that polished turd got eighty-one million votes, I'm the Queen of England. If you use any of these seven phrases every day, you may have low emotional intelligence. I'm not going to tell you where this comes from. But it was on CNBC, and I kind of laughed. Phrase number one, I'm not changing. This is who I am. Emotional intelligence is associated with an ability to change over time as you learn to grow. People with a low EQ are often more rigid and will fight efforts to shift or evolve. Strong convictions are important, but so is being open to new possibilities. Number two, I don't care how you feel. <laughs> Having a blatant disregard for other people's feelings is a sign of low emotional intelligence. Oh, my God. I must be an an emotional intelligence retard. (laughs) Number three, it's your fault I'm feeling this way. Well, that's 90% of the left right there. Uh, People with strong emotional intelligence don't blame the outside world for their feelings. They understand that their emotions are linked to how they internally perceive their circumstances. So, yes, the left is completely emotionally unintelligent. Number four, you're just wrong. When given feedback, emotionally intelligent people will make the effort to look for nuance. Number five, stop being crazy. Being able to hear someone else's experience without overreacting or taking it personally is a key sign of emotional intelligence. It means that you have a high sense of self-awareness and self-esteem. So far, they're describing the left here. Number six, I cannot forgive you. Emotionally intelligent people can put themselves in someone else's shoes. This makes them more open to forgive the other person. Seven, your feelings are irrational. People who are emotionally intelligent can interrogate their feelings, step outside of themselves, and analyze the rational and irrational aspects of, the, uh, of their thoughts. That is seven things that emotionally, intelligent, or emotionally unintelligent people say. And of course... This article was brought to you by the same people who couldn't answer a simple question. Do you condemn on your campuses the outcry to exterminate the Jews? It comes from Harvard. How about that? Pressure's growing right now on Harvard 
to oust Harvard President Claudine Gay after a Penn State's Liz McGill resigned. This is from CNN, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> Mike, I'm not going to say that in the air, but <laughs> I'm sure that's an emotionally intelligent thing to say, buddy. <laughs> oh, boy. In New York, CNN, now that Liz McGill has stepped down as president of the University of Pennsylvania, the spotlight has turned to her counterpart from Harvard University, Claudine Gay. Now, CNN, um, Reuters, all the others, if you, if you kind of browse through this feed, through these articles, you find that they are um, making this a Republican Party, GOP problem. You know, right-wing extremists are attacking, they're pouncing, they're seizing this opportunity. They're horrible, horrible people. No, these people are asked a simple question. And these people, these these people are promoting the genocide of Jews. And when asked about it, they either remain silent or they defend it. Turns out, it turns out that the reality, the harsh reality of it is, they are the minority. Any rational, reasonable person if you flew into this country and dropped a bunch of parachuters with guns and they just went through neighborhoods randomly shooting people, 1,300 people, 1,300 people just shooting them, and you knew that the government of the, of the country next to you that was responsible for it was behind it openly, any rational country would go after them and make sure that every one of those people were dead by the end of the, by the time they got done. But these Marxists, these these Nazi apologists that we live in, suddenly are coming out of the woodwork in support of ridding the planet of Jews. It's like we live in pre World War II Nazi Germany. What is going on? So CNN and others are making this a Republican issue when it's not. It is a definite left, progressive left issue. They're running their mouths, and it's not as popular as what they would like to think it is. One down and two to go. Republican uh, Representative Elise Stefanik of New York wrote on X, formerly known as Twitter, with the two being a reference to gay and MIT President Sally Kornbluth. In the case of Harvard, President Gay was asked by me 17 times whether calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard's code of conduct. She spoke her truth 17 times, and the world heard it, which means she did not condemn that type of speech. Yes, you have free speech, but why are you using a college platform to promote the genocide of a race? All three of these college presidents gave widely criticized testimony in which they failed to condemn calls for the genocide of Jews as explicitly against campus harassment and bullying codes, which is what they are. On Friday, a bipartisan group of lawmakers sent a letter to the governing boards. Get this, a bipartisan group of lawmakers sent letters to the governing boards of Harvard, Penn, and MIT, urging them to remove their university leaders. Meanwhile, hundreds of faculty members have signed a petition in support of Gay. Gay has since apologized for her remarks. I am sorry, she said in a somewhat inner uh, apology. It's not really an apology. Words matter. The funny thing about this whole thing is the progressive left are the ones who started the word game. The progressive left are the ones who went after Rush Limbaugh, who went after all of these people that they couldn't stand, they hated, because these people were telling the truth about how bad progressivism is. And so anytime they would say a single word that could indict them, that they could get everybody stirred up against them, they would stir people up against them. Well, now, now, they're finding out. 
the harsh reality of the situation is, is they started this game. They demanded we play this game. This game is their game, and it's being played. And as usual, they don't like it when they are on the defense end of this game. When they have to stand there and explain what they meant when they use words. You started it. You wanted to play this game. We begged you not to play this game, and you did. And now it's kicking you in the groin. Congratulations, idiots. And you know, I hope you know, I hope you realize that around this nation, college presidents who came out when Hamas attacked Israel, when they then some of these college president presidents came out and said, We condemn these attacks. We will not have our universities, our colleges use as platforms to spread hate. Even now, even this week are being protested by, I guess you'd call them, Hamas supporters. Now, here's the deal. And here's me just speculating. There's no facts behind it. The Palestinian, the pro-Palestinian protesters that we're seeing all over the United States of America, they sure do smell a lot like Black Lives Matter. They sure do act a lot like the, quote, grassroots, unquote, movements that spawned Black Lives Matter. The last thing there is grassroots, by the way. I don't believe that for a heartbeat. It's all organized. It's all completely organized. Um, Communist Party of the United States and Socialist Party of the U.S., they do most of this stuff. They, they have message boards. They have apps. They can move these people. They can mobilize their little minions in a heartbeat with these freshly polished, freshly printed signs and get them to places and make it feel like they're the majority, that you better step down because you're, the, you're at odds with the way everybody thinks. And it's not the truth. The harsh reality is, is these people are a severe minority. In fact, they're that way on most things. It's just they like to give the perception that they are the overwhelming majority. It's just they move around good. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? And I say this all the time, and I really wish it would happen. Could you imagine if the right played the same game? If some state government decided that they were going to be anti-free speech, they passed a hate speech law, squelching speech, and you knew it was going to be used against anything that they considered hate speech, which is anything that comes out of the right at all. And just out of nowhere, the next morning they wake up and there's just thousands of gun-toting, right-wing, freedom lovers walking down their streets saying they must go and scare them half to death. They would call in the military. They'd be bombing them with planes and tanks. Guaranteed. But see, that's, that's the problem. I guess that's the, that's the paradox of individualism. We don't do that because we have jobs. We all work. We all have to get up and go to work in the morning because we want to make a better life for ourselves and our kids. You offer me 25 bucks to go protest. I look at you and go, I can make 25 bucks working a half hour. Kiss my backside. I'm going to work. We have reached... Back up on top of the hour. Thank you so much for joining in with me tonight. Um, you know, I, I always sit there and think to myself, well, I might have enough show content, and then I always have things left over when I'm done. It's like, oh, gosh, I've over, overlooked again. <laughs> but, hey, keep it locked. Keep it locked on KLR and radio the rest of the week. We're going to have a great week. Um, you're going to find something you like on here. And um, don't forget... We have our Miracle on 34th Street show coming up. Um, That's uh, December 22nd, 2023 at 9 p.m. Man, tune into that because I I really, one of these days, I'm just going to take some time off and and join these guys in one of these things. It's so fun to listen to. But I will be humping away at work because I do the afternoon shift thing. That's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Anyways, uh, and then next week, 
Lord willing, join me back here Sunday night with Alan Ray. God bless, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you.